We've got a special guest with us on set to talk China, crypto, and so much more. Joining us right now is former SEC Chairman Jay Clayton. He's a CNBC contributor, non-executive chair of Apollo, American Express board member, and senior policy advisor for Sullivan and Cromwell among the, uh, the Jay Clayton portfolio. It's nice to see you. Great to see you. Um, we're going to sort of go around the hoop with uh, a couple of sort of portfolio issues, if you will. But I, I was very curious about what you thought of what uh, Glenn Youngkin said specifically about China and where you think we really are in all of this at this point. Great. Well, can I, I want to just make a quick observation, which is I've, I don't know if I've seen anyone make the transition from business to politics more smoothly. I mean, he looked like... Ben Youngkin. Yeah. He, he, you he think he's like, running for president? You know, what I, you know what I think? I think in America, it's great when a lot of people run for president. I, I, I hope people like Glenn Youngkin throw their hat in the ring. It's, all, it, it, it's, it's fantastic, right? He's got a different perspective from career politician, um, you know, you have him on the show. He talks about China. He clearly has a, what I would say is a great perspective on the codependency that we have with China, which is something very new for America. We have not had a codependency like this in modern history. I mean, you, you, let me just go to that. Yeah. Think about Apple, right? Over 7% of the S&P 500. I think Apple, you know, yep. you, you, Apple has, what, around 20% of their sales in China? 60% of their production, 50, 60% of their production. So our largest, most important global company has that kind of codependency with China. We have to recognize that that's a whole new world for us. A guy like Glenn Youngkin, he understands come, that, you could tell. Neither side of the political spectrum seems to be on board with that because it is one area where there's bipartisanship. Uh, there's some noises that the president's making right now about ramping things up. There's been a lot of uh, kind of vitriol from both sides. Um, you know, one thing, about, one thing about politics is most people look backwards because backwards is how they got elected. Where we are with China is so new for us. I mean, if we had a, a kinetic or an economic dislocation with China, it would be very significant for day-to-day -day Main Street. I, I don't think people understand that. Now, how we got ourselves into this, we can talk about and all of that, how we're going to get ourselves out of it. That's, that is the really important thing. And I think, uh, I think Governor Youngkin was doing a good job talking about it. He's like, okay, you know, we need to diversify in order to not be so codependent. But that, that's, I mean, everybody's been saying that. The question is... How do you do it? How do you do it? And right now, if you're a business, is there a greater danger? We were talking about it yesterday. Is there a greater danger if you're doing business in China that the danger comes from China or comes from America? Both. A mistake. Right? We, we're each codependent on each other. When you're codependent, you have no, no, leverage no, no. over the other. I'm saying that the politics are such that it used to be that people would say, okay, I'm going to do business in China, and, my, and the worry was the Chinese were going to take your IP or that they were going to decide to throw you out of the country or that there was some, something that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Today, the worry is just as much that the U.S. government is going to say, you know what, given the sort of uh, uh, Cold War that we have, mm -hmm. that's where this is all going, you got to get out of there. Or we don't want you doing this, or we don't want you doing that. I mean, look, think about all the, think about all the private equity investors. I'm actually surprised we haven't had this conversation yet. Mm -hmm. All the private equity investors who are invested in ByteDance, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay? KKR, uh, General Atlantic, you can go down the list. Sequoia, there's a lot of U.S. money in ByteDance, which owns TikTok. We sit around screaming about TikTok as if it's some kind of, you know, uh, a national security problem. But guess whose money it, it is? No, did it's we, American money. Did. There will be a day, I think, if we actually go down this road with TikTok, where what's really going to happen is we're going to say to KKR and General Atlantic and Sequoia and everybody else, get out of the pool. It, it may be coming, happening in the next couple of weeks. Right. There's a story of the day. Uh, okay, two, two, two responses to that. One is we should all recognize that we financed China's growth. We did it. We thought it would bring democracy to China. So we are, we are deeply embedded in China. That's where we are. That means that any kind of sharp pullback is going to have significant economic consequences. What that, what that doesn't mean is that we should just go on about business tomorrow like we did yesterday. And that, that's where the pivot has to come. But a, but a sharp dislocation between the U.S. and China, it's also not good for China. Like, if, you, if, you're, if you're in China and you're sitting there and saying, if we have a sharp dislocation, what does that mean for us? Not so good either. So that's, we, the, the, the easiest way to solve a problem, or say the, the best way to solve a problem, is recognize the problem that you have. Let me ask you an SEC question. Mm -hmm. Do you think the SEC has failed 
and you could say this is during this administration, previous administrations, when you were there, before, after, in terms of how we have regulated Chinese companies doing business here on our exchanges? The, the answer is, I, I, I do. I do. Okay. And let me tell you why. Because we tell American investors that if a company is listed on the U.S. exchange, that the financial statements are something that you can rely on with a degree of rigor that exists nowhere else in the world. Right. For a long time, that was not true of Chinese companies listed in the U.S. It, it still is probably not true. There, you had Van Hollen. You had Van Hollen and Kennedy on. They passed mm -hmm. a bill that says we need to make that true. Right, but it's not. It's not but, there yet. And it's not there yet, and it's not moving as fast as it should have. We gave that. We gave the Chinese three years to come into compliance with the PCAOB regulations. They did not. That's my view. We gave them another period of time. We can debate on on what it is, but whatever it is, it's been too long. There's no excuse for how but long who it's has been. To, you believe that has to come from Congress. It cannot come. It from came it. from Congress. No, I know, but yeah. can't the SEC, SEC do it, can't the like SEC that? actually just say, okay, we're doing it and yeah. see what happens? The, the answer is the SEC was able to do that at the end of last year. The SEC said they've been compliant enough where we're going to give them more time. I I think that 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 you're getting there, you're getting there, but they really haven't. Has gone on too long.